I actually the the ones that probably stay with me throughout the day are mm-hmm. like anger mm-hmm. dreams. Like, <laughs> I have this like injustice dreams like i have this like okay. major injustice happening in my mind uh-huh. mm-hmm. and i've woken so many times with like my fist in the air <laughs> <laughs> like i'm trying to punch somebody like, that's how i wake up I'm like, uh, <laughs> he was sleeping <laughs> he was dreaming of fighting someone and he punched me and they're oh. like oh okay that's lo- not the story you just said it was just a it's kind of a weird dream that uh there's some girl that i was on a date with and i made her cry <laughs> <laughs> Good going, Sergio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dream, Sergio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you punch uh, her? <laughs> no. Hey, guys. This is Waiting to Dry. I'm Josh Lawyer. I'm Sergio Lopez. And today we have... Elisa Ivanova. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I did try to skip saying your name. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. Um, you don't want to give it a crack for fun. <laughs> Elisa Ivan, Ivan, Ivanova? Yeah. Oh, you nailed I it. I could have done that. No <laughs> accent either. <laughs> really? Yeah. A lot uh, of people say like Ivanova. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm pretty good if I try. <laughs> Sometimes I get lazy on things. Like I'll say like guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. But that's probably just to make my wife mad. Ah, that's <laughs> Why does she say guacamole? I don't know. I just like to say Latin words unlatiny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, thanks for doing this with us. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah. This is the awesome. first time I've done uh like the headphones. Oh really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you done other like podcast interviews before? I've done a few uh Let's see. A couple of on Skype. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, one in person. Yeah, I've, I've done a few. Nice. nice. Awesome. Yeah, the... Uh, all different. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, the Your work, I don't know. I mean, I always say this. It's always horrible, but I'm pretty sure most people will know about your work by the time they listen to this. <laughs> and you have a huge Instagram following, so I'm sure yeah. uh, they know your work. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's. I mean, we're latching onto your li- uh, your fan base for sure. I'm sure. That's just that's like totally a, fine. that's just like a bonus because your work is, is like amazing, right? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm a fan of yours as well. Thank you. The uh, yeah, the cool thing is, um, like I, you know, I follow your work and I like it here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when we do these shows, it kind of forces me to go and like look at the artist's work as like a whole. And it's like, uh, which I highly recommend people do because every time I do it, I'm always like, wow, like these people are amazing. Cause right. you, 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 you kind of forget, right? Yeah. You get used to it. <laughs> or you just see one painting by itself mm-hmm. yeah, or one true. drawing by itself and you go like, oh, that's cool. Like, but then when you like go and you look at their page and you, you flip through it, mm-hmm. it's like this thing where you're like, wow, like it, I don't know. It just becomes like a. You just appreciate the work way more, yeah, I think. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I had to do this. Uh, I do it like every episode. I just mm-hmm. kind of flick through their Instagram and kind of just try to like enjoy their art. And, and, uh, and yeah, it, it was, there's like moments where I'm like, oh my God. So good, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we do di- very different art in ways. Where there's some things that your art allows you to do because of its looseness and its like um, illustrativeness. I'm sure, that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. That, yeah. uh, I I I want to do, but I have to kind of probably have to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, so. Yeah, I, I think uh, it came a little bit out of necessity for a lot of reasons. Uh, one being I have a kid, mm-hmm. and um, she's almost five now, so that allows me to be a little more um, free with my not free with my time. What I want to say it's like I can do more stuff. Like I can right. paint around her, not worrying that she's gonna you know get toxic fumes right. from oils, need a brush or something, um, right? You know. <laughs> Or that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, when I started doing the the squiggly lines, uh-huh. they're like, teach me the squiggly lines. Uh-huh. I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, it became, um, you know, out of like, okay, I only have 
you know, my sketch pad mm-hmm. on my lap. Mm-hmm. Right. I can't really have a lot of water around because that's that needs preparation, right? Everything if, if mm-hmm. that's like easy access was very convenient. Huh, okay. And I'm like, okay, well, I have this limitation now of like a pencil, um, you know, eraser, and I ended up using the sketch, uh, the sorry, blending stick. Oh, okay, right. yeah, yeah. Which people now like, ooh, blending stick. It's right. Like you're saying, like, oh, they didn't. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> right. It wasn't like a goal. Like, right. Cool. What is my tool? It's yeah. almost um, like, like your environment literally affected your art. Oh, yeah. Big yeah. time. Big <laughs> wow. time. And I'm wow. like, okay, well, this is my life right now. Like, this is all I can do. Like, uh-huh. what can I – let me kind of do the best with I with what I have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was fun. Like, it was a challenge. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Like, limitations. And you start pushing stuff around. Like, oh, this looks nice. Right. Let's take mm-hmm. it further. What do uh-huh. you do? Yeah. So it's like baby stepping into something that ended up – Making the majority of my book, uh-huh. yeah. and uh, it was a little bit of a surprise when I, you know, looked at the all my work. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of it here, and because it's quick, mm-hmm. that means I can get a lot of my ideas out. Right. That's awesome. Um, I don't have to wait for mm-hmm. it to um, try. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I just couldn't. I didn't have the space or mm-hmm. time. To right. Do that. Huh. Now I'm very much like obsessed with mm-hmm. painting, trying to get. As as good as I, or comfortable, I should say, I'm good is like a, <laughs> a funky term. Yeah. Uh, but comfortable with the medium, uh-huh. um, that the same way I was with pencil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the new challenge. Yeah, for sure. How long have you been doing oil painting now? I did it before, um, before college. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, I initially was going to be a painter. That was my. Dream. Oh really? <laughs> um, so when I was twelve, I began um, taking some lessons, like private lessons, at um, uh, a studio back in Bulgaria. I'm Bulgarian, by the way. I didn't mention that. <laughs> oh, I, I grew up there. Uh, yeah, till was, I was seventeen, and then I moved to college to the U.S. So before that, I was in Bulgaria in a private studio, trying to learn uh, to be very academic. Okay. Uh, my goal was eventually to to go to um, Academy, okay. like the National Academy of Art. Oh, mm-hmm. in Bulgaria? Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is really, it's a super good school. Oh. Like, great artists come there. Um, hmm. Like, academically, like, oh, pristine. You know, if you think, like, old Russian, um, sure, sure. Like badass artists, that's <laughs> yeah, kind of that the stuff. quality that came out of that school. And I was really into that. Like, I really wanted to mm-hmm. become that. But I also was super interested in film. Like, just... Something that never really surfaced in my brain until, like, literally junior year of high school. Hmm. And I'm like, film? Like, I, how do I get in film somehow? Uh-huh. And that's where um, the animation world right. surfaced for um, me. I mean, I loved animation, but it was more like a, just like a kid liking animation. Sure. Right. Um, and then I'm like, wait, like, animation is kind of artsy film like mm-hmm. there's a lot of drawing involved yeah for sure and um i decided to look into it i got super sucked into the world of like 2d animation and um like how is it done like who are the big names in animation not necessarily mm-hmm. directors but just even animators mm-hmm. so how'd so you I go about researching. that research yeah just by curiosity, mm. like, oh, this is a great scene. Who did this scene? Like in some some movies, or like, who are the big names in Disney? Where okay. do they go to school? And obviously, right. like the old school guys, um, they're from all over. But then I started seeing this trend of like CalArts, CalArts. So like, what is CalArts? Oh, uh, okay, <laughs> sure, of, sure. A lot of big names in animation came from that school. So I started researching CalArts and. Uh, from that school, I found all the other animation schools, and it really kind of opened my my mind a little bit about that world. And um, I ended up doing a summer school at mm-hmm. CalArts um, just for, I think, a month or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came back, I'm like, okay, this is it. Like, I really want to go there. <laughs> my cool. art teacher nice. was mad at me. He's like, what are you doing? Are you just throwing that, all that preparation away? I'm like, yeah. it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it feels right. Um, and now I'm like going full circle. And now yeah. I'm like, okay, let's go back to. Yeah, to I think it's, it's like good timing as well because, like, uh, illustration. I feel like, uh, uh, not illustration, but like uh, graphic design or. 
What's it called? What? The, uh, like, like all these, like, 2D drawings and all this stuff, or, like, cartoons and stuff, they, like, are m- way more respected nowadays than I think they were. I think there's, like, a gap almost. Like, the cartoon mm. classics, whenever I go and look back at them, I'm like, wow, they were, like, some great... Oh, yeah. Like, little, like, they would have, like, the normal drawing, and then they would cut to, like, a really rendered, <laughs> like, uh, painting almost of yeah. something. And uh, then it, it kind of, like, took a downhill for, like, speed and all these things. And then we've kind of taken, like, an uphill turn with a lot of, like, the 3D, uh, like, um, movies and all that thing, all that stuff. It, it really kind of brought back, like, this... Almost like it's not just for kids thing. Oh yeah, and I think yeah. that builds the respect or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. there's. I mean, there's some movies, um, especially coming out of like Japan. They they have cult followings. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. There's stuff that's like for sure. Kids should not see this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. For many yeah. reasons, <laughs> but they're really really yeah. good. Um, <laughs> and they have. I think there's the, this respect for the craft that's definitely mm-hmm. fueling yeah. a comeback. I agree, and then. I don't know if you're familiar, but there's a new software coming out. Um, I I should mention just because I'm working with them. Mm. Um, they're from Canada. Toon Boom. I don't know. Do you, have you heard of them? No. What they did is um, similar a little bit to Flash where oh, yeah. it's um, like a little bit automated, like puppet animation. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot more options uh, for drawing within that puppet that you built so there's okay. it's, i call it two and a half d mm-hmm. okay. because <laughs> it, it really automates a bunch of stuff that you don't want to do by hand like coloring that stuff is figured out for you right mm-hmm. off the bat like if you build your puppet right you can literally have colored keys as you go which mm. is <laughs> something that you know is dreaded in the animation work, not so much by the artist, but just cost wise, it just costs a lot mm. of money for cleanup. Usually, mm. cleanup and cleaning animation takes like three times as much as animating it. Oh, mm. really? Huh. In which you can imagine the cost is again three times. Right. Mm. And yeah. if you can elim- eliminate that, it becomes very competitive to 3D, especially right. on oh, a wow. small scale. Huh. Um, That's awesome. 3D is really expensive. Oh. For a mm-hmm. show or for a short film, okay, it really makes sense to invest in like a very high budget looking something um, film mm-hmm. if it's a feature, because like all that initial cost for preparation pays off when you're pr- making the film, mm-hmm. and that's okay. where you're saving. But like if you have this super high cost preparation and then the movie's done, back <laughs> 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 from far away. Snap of the <laughs> if it's um, if it. It's done in like 10 minutes, then it becomes really expensive oh. uh, for, you know, when you think like rendering, lighting, effects, you know, good rigs. You want things to look right and not CG-ish or right. amateur. Yeah. So um, I, I've seen a lot of new shows on, especially on Netflix, that are done with like Toon Boom. Oh, really? And they're huh. like 2D is has taken over oh that's That's awesome yeah because i'd always thought of traditional 2d animation these days as as a such a niche thing because it is so normally thought of as so labor intensive and people aren't really doing it so much anymore on the um on like a big budget like hollywood scale so that anybody who's still doing traditional 2d animation they're kind of doing it more for the love of it and so there's more artistry in it traditionally but yeah. that's cool that it's uh, making its way back into mainstream I some more. So. You could see it in that movie Coco, right? They like cut to like 2D parts. Was that that movie that That did wasn't it? done with Toon Boom. Oh, no. That was hand drawn. Oh, really? Oh, I know that what you're TV talking about. Like, oh, that's a different software, but that hmm. is very much similar to your traditional way where you, you rough it out, you know, and right. then you have to clean it up by hand, hmm. like each, each frame. But I know um, on. Uh, Moana, like all the tattoos on Maui, uh-huh. those were TV paint. Oh, oh okay. no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Toon boom. Toon boom. Okay. <laughs> Similar. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. we're talking about it, but th- you work for the uh, Pixar. Yes. <laughs> How has that been? Oh, it's great. <laughs> it's amazing. Those um, the places. Uh, I hope you know what bigs are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure if uh, yeah, you're listening, sure you're know. probably... Yeah, I've been there for... You probably have cried <laughs> the pigs are. <laughs> yeah. We do make you cry. <laughs> yeah. But good tears. <laughs> yeah, I've been there almost nine years. what gets them the years. Oscars. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like every, um, as, as we talked earlier, it, yeah. I, because like every movie is so different, it feels fresh each time. And that's mm. how, how the years just fly by. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. I think, how many movies have been on? Like six or seven. Yeah. You were oh, telling wow. us earlier that you worked on Coco. So you're kind of. Yeah. It's your fault we cried. <laughs> yes. You're, part, you're, you're someone to blame. We oh, yeah. A, now we have a physical <laughs> I'll person. I'll take it. <laughs> blame it on me. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Reimburse uh, me for the tissues you made me. <laughs> oh, that's the creative uh, genius of the directors. Like, they, they yeah. know how to navigate emotions so well. Like, we yeah. just, I mean, I think our role as animators, we just make it truthful right. and mm-hmm. believable. Mm-hmm. And definitely, like, we're the actors of the movie but yeah. I mean there's so much going on yeah, there's sometimes I'll go to into like a it. Pixar movie and I'll know that they're gonna like they're, it's like alright you guys are working on my mo- you guys yes. are tugging on some strings right now <laughs> yeah and still you're just like shivery chin and trying to hold it in as a <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that that happens that happens to me all the time even I work on the movies and I cried on Coco like yeah. three oh, really? times <laughs> like <laughs> I know this movie so well like why am I crying <laughs> yeah. every time like, yeah. it just gets you yeah it just gets you yeah. and, and uh, uh, someone asked but we were also I at least I was curious um, and I kind of asked you earlier before we started recording but like I, I'm always curious when someone has a full time job where they're creating, and then they they also have like their separate art form that's, you know, they're kind of like what they love to do on their own and is 100 percent them. Is is it tough to after creating all day to create? At least for you, I mean, I don't want you to speak for everyone out there, but yeah, I said, yeah different people handle that stress differently um you know it was tough it's not as tough Mm -hmm. Uh, i think because i i forced myself to build the habit of going Mm -hmm. home and being creative Mm -hmm. that's that's something that i look forward to the way you Mm -hmm. were talking about going to your studio right Mm -hmm. same thing like i i look forward to that one hour that i can sketch and you know it's like everything you build the habit and it doesn't become it's not a chore anymore right it's like first time in the gym versus like a year right in the gym he's like mm-hmm. yeah it's just another day and you know right. you know your routine right. so you know what to do to get to that creative um mm-hmm. mindset or whatever needs yeah. to like make you like your brain shift into like right. okay it's creative creative time mm-hmm. but to your point, it sometimes it is tiring, especially in crunch time. Like you go home and you're just spent. You're like, oh, right. I, I, mm-hmm. I just want to veg. Like I don't want to do sure. anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there's too many back to back crunch times, right? That's where you're kind of like, okay, what's what's happening here? Yeah, like I need some. I need to be sane. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. Because it's very important to have something that you know that is your own, and no one. Like, no one can stop you from doing it mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I will sketch no matter what. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if for some reason people are angry, like, that, I don't care. Right. Um, yeah, that's your one thing. Seriously, yeah, it's very, very important to have that. Yeah, you know, I, I think I've so. seen a lot of people who are like, you know, I want to start a hobby, but, like, there's so many obstacles. If you really want to start a hobby, you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always tell people that. They're like, oh, how do I? And I'm like. Just do it. Like, you have to force yourself to do you it. Have to yeah. force That's the yourself. most important thing. Everything else after that, there's little things here and there. Make sure. And it's possible. It's yeah. really possible to do whatever you want. I mean, I didn't really. I made every excuse on the planet right. before having a kid mm-hmm. to, like, not make a book, not paint, all mm-hmm. these things. I'm like, yeah, it's just not the right time. Like, I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. All these all these excuses. And, um, and then she was born, like, Okay, now we really don't have the time. <laughs> but what happens now? Like, right. where do we yeah. go from here? Mm-hmm. And when you kind of realize that sometimes you're your own worst enemy, and, and mm-hmm. um, you have that monkey brain that tells you like hey, you're not good enough, like mm-hmm. don't I, you're I a hack. An, I have an alien brain, by the way. <laughs> alien, okay, Super I superior. call I call monkey brain, <laughs> and I hate it. I hate that monkey uh, brain. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> His that, is a monkey brain, but it's from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> It's a dumber monkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, 
yeah, when you start making the excuses, you're like, okay, well, where do I start? Like, what is right. step one? For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the routine is big. I think, you know, when people are trying to get better at things, I think learning how to make sure that you value your time so you're you're trying to push yourself, I think that's a big thing. I know, like, you, you know, you were saying earlier how you had, like, the, the limited amount of tools. Yeah. And so that kind of, like, almost makes you try to figure it out. And I think that part of, like, pushing your brain is really important because it really makes – I think it engages like a part of your brain that creates and and is willing to like make mistakes and all these like things that are good for creating artwork. Hmm. <clears throat> and and also are not attached to your ego. Right. Yeah. Which I think it's important. Because a lot of times I, I've seen artists who are like, you know, I just I don't have the ideas, like that big concept. You're like now mm-hmm. you're thinking like, oh, you just want to be like, the, you just have this image of yourself as like this incredible artist with like such right. deep concept <laughs> stuff you say no get rid of that get rid of that vision and you just enjoy drawing for a minute like mm, if, right. even if it's like a cat or whatever a mm-hmm. chair right for sure like, you can do a lot with very limited yeah. um even ideas yeah you just go have to start somewhere if something is preventing you from starting that's the thing you gotta get rid of if, even if it's mm. like that vision of like where you want to be and mm-hmm. i don't know <laughs> 10 20 years yeah just don't think about that for a minute yeah. it's okay to like not think big picture all the time for yeah sure. and if it hinders your obviously your um productivity yeah if this is like things that drives you forward by all means but like, if that's <laughs> right. the one thing that stops you or like oh you, you compare yourself all the time like oh, mm. i'm not just i'm not good enough or i'm not I'm nowhere near this artist so why even bother right so yeah. well, do you think they just started from you know they were born and right. they were incredible no i like, mm-hmm. oh my god i look at some of my stuff like five years ago mm-hmm. like cringe yeah, yeah for sure yeah. Stuff, stuff i put in my book from last year i'm already like oh what did i put in there this is terrible but you know, it's in there yeah. so it's also nice and um it helps you not judge yourself all the time for sure and i had a, i had an amazing teacher um at college who was very much about um preserving all your art even your very bad thing like if you think it's bad mm-hmm. just preserve it just it doesn't hurt like don't put it in the garbage just mm-hmm. preserve it mm-hmm. and it's just it's kind of like your own study of your growth and yeah. then i look back at some stuff i'm like okay this is not obviously nothing that i really like like right mm-hmm. but there's something in it that i don't do anymore yeah and I would take li- little chunks of mm-hmm. information from stuff I've done in the past. I'm like, oh, I, I can reuse that. Why not? Yeah. And then it just, you know, it's There's knowledge. even like uh, attitudes I find. Like when I look at my older stuff, I'm like, man, I, I had some balls to try that. And like I really, <laughs> right. like I didn't, I was fearless in this area. Maybe yeah. I wasn't technically good or whatever or I didn't have the right tools, but I was like fearless here. And I should think that way again. Yeah. Like, things yeah. like that. I look at my old sketchbooks. I'm like, oh, this was back when I was really creative. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. But. Yeah. But uh, also the um, – God, I just lost my thought. The What were we talking about? Um, just things that hold us back. Oh, I, I was going to say that uh, a lot of times I'll post sketchbook pictures and I get like uh, people that say, oh, like, oh, how much is this? And I'm, I, I always say like this is the – thing that's not for sale like my oh. sketchbook is the one mm-hmm. place that i hold on to and i mm-hmm. preserve yeah. for myself because yeah i don't tear sketchbooks yeah. either yeah. i don't like it like, I know, it's like because i, I want to like a diary yeah <laughs> yeah and i want to go back and look through the years and see like oh wow like look at me there right really exactly <laughs> yeah. I, I mean i don't know about you but like i do write too like in some stuff yeah, that i'm too. like no i should <laughs> Yeah. We should know about this plot. <laughs> some, yeah, exactly. There's some sketchbooks that it's like when I was younger and I would write like bad poetry. And I'm like, ah, I like, I like think about it. And I'm like, God, some every because I have my sketchbooks like out. So if anyone's like, oh, do you use a sketchbook? I'm like, yeah, check them out. And I'm always like, please don't touch those ones because they're so bad. <laughs> they're so there's, yeah. they're so lame. Um, just emotional teenage Josh. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. I I have a sketchbook where it's like some stuff that I. I really like and mm-hmm. I put in my book and then next page will be like my bills and then mm-hmm. all oh, the bills sure. that I have to pay like yeah, you know Comcast <laughs> yeah I'm like oh my god why uh, did I do that yeah, that's, so, that's spot on <laughs> that's the one thing I want to cut off but I'm like no right. it's kind of yeah. cool though because 
this is you can you, it's almost like a slice of life yeah, type I think of so. moment. You open it, you immediately like, oh, I remember like, yeah. all these bills I have to pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I also have like um, I played like every once in a while. Me and my friends will hang on. We played dominoes. I don't know if you ever played dominoes, but you have to like write down the scores. Yeah. And so in my sketchbooks, I'll have like random just like <laughs> my name and my buddy's name. And then I just know like, oh, that day we got drunk and had some fun. Like just like a little like sliver of. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> that's um, awesome. But yeah, that's, a, I don't know. I love talking sketchbook talk. That's like my favorite thing um, about art is my sketchbook. Like the paintings, I they're like almost the last process to mm -hmm. my artwork huh. it's like uh it's like i i doodle i come up with ideas i doodle more about those ideas and then i think about them and then i take photos of the models and get to the final point and then the painting is like and end result mm -hmm. is that like that's hmm. the end result but that's sure. not my favorite part of it at all it's, it's almost like the most uh the the part i want to present the most to be like this is where all the hard work is. This is the movie Coco, not mm -hmm. all the work that went into it. But to me, like the sketchbook is the, is like the, the diary or whatever. Yeah. About it. It's, it's, it's you like see the, a lot more of the thought process. Too. Yeah. I like right. that too. I, I like seeing a lot of uh, sketches and unfinished stuff because you, you mm -hmm. start to deconstruct how an artist thinks. Yeah. There's so many different ways that people approach art. Even sure. like the simplest thing, like, I think that's the reason why a lot of times people want to see artists draw mm -hmm. for this, that reason. Just to be so. like, okay, how did this go from nothing on the paper to mm -hmm. whatever it is? Mm. And um, I'm like, well, this is my way. People are like, what? You start from blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I guess. <laughs> and then I Blinding see stuff. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that? Actually, like, what is that? What is that stops fancy a... pencil? I'm like, yeah. it's yeah. just paper. You just roll yeah, paper. exactly. <laughs> Blinding stumps get a bad rap, but I love them. I use them in my charcoal drawing what stuff all the time. What is that? I never, see, I think back home, we never used them, so I didn't even hear them until I was, like, here. Oh, then, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's because a lot of people who are, like, quote-unquote amateur use them, and they don't, like, mm -hmm. they just don't know how what they're doing with them. They don't understand how to build okay, volume okay, and form and everything. It just becomes, like, muddy. And, yeah. And just, uh -huh. Yeah, I can see that. But that's, like, the same with cross-hatching. Yeah, like, exactly. You see, like, really terrible <laughs> yeah. cross-hatching, you're like... <laughs> But then you can't say, oh, cross-hatching sucks. You right. Know, like, that's, exactly. a, that's a bad reason. I mean, <laughs> you give an amateur reason. artist you know, oil paints, they'll make a bad painting. Oh, yeah. Probably. Well, yeah. that's what people so, think. Like, you can do amazing things with those Crayola watercolor trays if yeah. you really want to. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but it's just, you know, kids use them mostly. So <laughs> but, <laughs> I've done some cool stuff with those. Before. Yeah, I love them. I used to use them. One of my teachers yeah. in, in school, he was like, yeah, just buy the cheap Crayolas and, and use those and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So, uh, uh, I, mean, I haven't, I haven't tried that. <laughs> I've been reading into Prisma lately. Really, the mm -hmm. color pencils? The pencils, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. For some I mean, reason, they they're fun to. Um, they're kind of a little waxier than usual. Mm -hmm. The usual pencils that I've used, and um, that that's to me, I um, gives me like nice versatility, almost oh, okay. like. Um, so you like the waxiness of them? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Because I was gonna say, if you've ever tried Verithins, they're they're Prisma colors, but they you know they have that other type of lead that's a little more, I guess, not chalky but less wax in it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. What is the difference? Did you um, blend the differently? Um, kind of. Yeah, you can because um, they're like a, a thinner lead. You can um, sharpen them. You could usually sharpen them a lot more because uh, Prisma color pencils usually they as you work the strokes you they kind of um they get blunt quicker that's true whereas mm -hmm. with verithin they're harder lead well not lead but you know so like you can um do more um do like a sharper oh, I like, try that. like okay. more detail work yeah i i used to love verithins when i was doing more sketchbook stuff that was my favorite mm -hmm. that's that's our one art tip for the podcast <laughs> oh, well, there'll be a lot Damn of those <laughs> should be paying for that <laughs> Yeah, so good. we rarely so talk good. about uh, art things like that. You know, really? Like, yeah. oh like what you should I'm do. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with <laughs> practical solutions. Mm. To oh, really? <laughs> I can't even start. Like, um, I did a recently um, a demo in Croatia mm -hmm. at oh, yeah. IFCC there, 
And um, it was all about that because, you know, I'm doing traditional work. But mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like, how do I get <laughs> Photoshop filters with pencil? If that makes sense, like how do I yeah, get this yeah. effect with? And it just became this mm, this um, rabbit hole <laughs> that yeah. I fell in. That I can't stop. Like I have to. <laughs> like I started doing mm. a lot of, um, like using rubbing alcohol. Oh um, sure. Um, with pencil, and it just makes things like ink. Uh -huh. Not only that, it actually works like ink because you can't erase it. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. sure, sure. So just using rubbing mm -hmm. alcohol and pencil makes it mm -hmm. um, like it seals fun. it, mm -hmm. and it's so cool because then you can work on top of it. Mm -hmm. it. You know, some parts that didn't take the alcohol, you can erase so it becomes really textured, mm -hmm. and it's like oh, it's, it's super playful. That's awesome. I love that stuff. So same with the blending stick. Like I sometimes I would use a blending stick. Sometimes I would use a Q-tip. Right, right. The yeah. And um, it just there's something about that variation that is. Um, very appealing to me. For mm -hmm. sure. The variation in texture quality. Yeah. 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 yeah with blending stumps, like if you're really, uh, if you really finesse it, it almost looks like watercolor, it like does. an ink wash almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really it was beautiful. Have you ever found like something that you thought you created or something and then you're like, oh, I do this. And then some other artists are like, me too. You're like, or vice versa, they start explaining something, and you're like, "Oh, I do that too." Yeah. And then mm -hmm. it's the like, uh, "It's like, oh, we both figured out the like solve this problem <laughs> but then the, on our own." And then the end result is so different. Yeah, for right, sure. Exactly. Whoa, yeah. How? Yeah. How? Like that? That's, I love that. I love seeing sometimes even like different artists doing the same thing, like right. doing one, you know, drawing a model with just pencil, and then mm -hmm. every drawing is so different. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and just that to me is, I'm like, I want to. How did you do that? Whatever right, exactly. There. Yeah. It's, just, it's fascinating. Yeah. That was my favorite thing about school, seeing how other people mm. do things oh, yeah. with the same tools. But even yeah. starting mm. from different places, like some people start with the shading right away. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Like I have to, I think silhouette. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. think volumes. Okay. Like oh, really? I'm very much about the silhouette first, and mm -hmm. then I will just fill in the blanks within. So if mm. I get the, the clear silhouette that I want, um, then to me is easy to figure out the rest. Mm, that's <laughs> awesome. So no, it's kind of like a, I kind of fake volume. <laughs> <laughs> See, things look volumey. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a word either. But it should be. It should be volume. -y. <laughs> yeah, that's and, cool. Uh, but it's all just about the silhouette and like making things look. That's why a lot of times my stuff is a little pushed, mm -hmm. but then you add that realistic texture on top and it. It's a nice blend between being pushed and being realistic. Mm. I like that, like kind of blurring that line. Yeah, for sure. Mm. I think you mm -hmm. do it too. I think I've seen. Try, try to sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do well, you think? Do you do silhouette too? Uh, depends. Like in my sketchbook, I do a lot of blocking in of shapes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but when I paint, it's all like measured out and stuff like that. I mm -hmm. take my time and just and then. And then I start with shading first. That's really? Usually, yeah, with painting. Oh, man. I, uh, I, I admire that. I can't. Yeah. I've tried so many times and failed miserably. Mm. Like, okay. I guess this is just not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you do it, Sergio? Um, that's a good question. Um, I'm giving away too much info. <laughs> 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 I mean. <laughs> this is our most uh, art, like, technique-y so episode. Geeky, I love it. <laughs> uh, I guess it depends. Um when I do plein air stuff, I, I'll try just about any type of thing to mm. try and make it work. Um, but when I'm doing figure stuff, lately I've been trying to do experiment with different approaches. Like mm -hmm. uh, a painting I'm about to start now, I'm going to start with like the background and make a, the sh overall background shape around the figure. Mm -hmm. And then kind of start to render in the figure once all the background is around oh, it that's crazy to me that, that's yeah <laughs> that's awesome but uh a lot of times i just do like a light and, and dark pattern uh like the overall like sort of like if you were to cut the figure out like along the dark and light side like right. one mm -hmm. side is is all light and one side is all dark and i start from the dark that's just kind of how i learned how to do it in school mm. so um a lot of times i'll start that way but um I mean, there's so many different ways to, to do oil paint. I'm just trying out different ways and see what yeah. I like now because, um, yeah, I'm just kind of bored of doing it the same way over and over again. For sure. That's and so fun. Like, even changing one 
part of your routine, it kind mm-hmm. of completely changes even the final look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you're changing one color that you normally go for, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're like, whoa, this is yeah, a new palette. Sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys like to um, experiment with different colors? Like you go to the art store and pick up a paint oh, that yeah. you've never tried? Yeah. Well, hmm. MJ's sponsored by Gambling, so I, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm like, they just send her a paint. I'm like, I'll try it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, great. I think it's like it's a nice again limitation. You put a limitation, yeah. you're like, well, let's see what comes out. For sure. Sometimes it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it's such a nice um, result that you're like, okay, this is I like this. So yeah. this is going. Yeah. Yeah. It's fresh. <laughs> I uh, I I haven't been oil painting that long. So since MJ sponsored by Gamlin, my like palette started <laughs> off with like every color. I'm like, let's figure this out. Yeah. yeah. It slowly keeps getting smaller and smaller. To, like, <laughs> now I we... use these ones. Right. And, yeah. And, yeah, no, blue totally. period. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pink period. <laughs> exactly. It's all going to be pretty soon. Well, I'm not sad. <laughs> yeah. It'd be it'd be good to do a blue period, but just like all happy paintings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, blue sunny sky. Yeah, yeah, kid with balloons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's cool. Um, so your style is like pretty illustrative, right? Like, and they have these like. Um, Another real word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna Webster get updated. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, you also like the one of the things I love is like the gestures your 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 uh, like figures have. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially like uh, did you know like the the guy with like the claw hand or uh, the oh, kid yeah. with, <laughs> like there's that one night the crab uh, kids yeah the crab kids. <laughs> the, uh, the, I think just like the kids' postures that you draw are always mm-hmm. like super cool. Do you work from model in that situation? I always use reference. Okay. okay. Like yeah. always. Okay. Well, like 99.9% <laughs> of the time. Okay. Because, I mean, it's free information. Yeah, It's for out sure. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I use it, the, the way I use it is, it's like a starting point. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really stick to it. I mean, obviously, they, there's no crab kids right. <laughs> out yeah. well, in the that world. That we know of. <laughs> that we know of. Yeah. But um, I, I, this is like some characters that I've been developing for quite a while. So I'm like, I'm trying to push for something, like a story. Mm-hmm. But then I need, I need to be, it to be uh, grounded in reality so sure. definitely starting with references usually yeah, i mean yeah. photos obviously but a lot of times like if just the photo doesn't exist for some reason or can't find the right mm-hmm. thing that i have in mind i would pose mm-hmm. myself and just try to as long as i get the angle right. you know we can kind yeah. of fit the body in there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and sometimes it takes a few tries until you know, you nail that pose or yeah. your body. Sometimes mm. I don't care. I'm like, well, it looks close enough. For sure. <laughs> so it really depends on that. Yeah. But yeah, I always have reference. I've been collecting for quite a while, but also for the sake of not copying someone else's work. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to be respectful of the artist that took the photos, right. even mm. if they're amateur. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. they, they took it. Like yeah. I, I can't quite claim <laughs> Like my five minute research here right. <laughs> for the, this is my pose now. Yeah. So I try to change it as much as I can mm-hmm. um, so that it, either it doesn't quite look like the model right. or it's like unrecognizable. I mean, Sometimes your figures it is, are but. kind of exaggerated in like certain parts yeah, and stuff most like of that. The time. So. But that's because of that. Like I just want to get away from the references mm. as quickly as I can yeah. and then be on my own and kind of build on top of that initial sketch that I did. Right. Nice. How did those crab kids come about? Uh, well, good question. <laughs> Where did it come from? As a kid, I was I grew up n- near water. Uh-huh. So this this story that I want to develop is based on that idea of like living near water and uh, like the simple like the ocean or sea, mm-hmm. the sea, like yeah. the black sea. Oh, sure, sure. But again, like ocean, same thing, mm-hmm. and. Um, I've always had this like vision. Vision. It's a, kind of like sci-fi, not sci-fi, um, what a fantasy mm-hmm. world of like these kids that have to um, battle these giant crabs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I mean, the story is like super great, like very early on still. But um, I, I, I like to build 
visuals mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of get that flavor mm -hmm. of what I want to tell and then develop something from there. That's awesome. Same way, like, the short films that I've made, they always come about that way. I mm -hmm. start with the, oh, yeah. the kind of, like, that snapshot in your mind. You try to get it out. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm starting to see the world build around mm -hmm. this. And then you try to make a coherent story out of that. Would mm -hmm. you ever want to make, like, a graphic novel? That's, that's the goal. That's oh. awesome. Sweet. I have two ideas. One is uh, fantasy, the Crab Kids one, and the other one is a uh, sci-fi one, which is, I don't even want to start <laughs> talking about it because it's so wacky For sure. yes, right now, but hopefully I can make it. That's awesome. That <laughs> I really want to run do that. I it's love on my mind. seeing like a graphic novel where the artwork is like done by an art like you can oh, tell like yeah. they have like th their art style developed mm -hmm. yeah i mean some of my favorite books are exactly like that mm -hmm. like uh, sergio topi's graphic novels mm -hmm. oh, oh, names i have to look at him for a name yeah he's amazing <laughs> he's just i don't know every time i see it it's like it makes me happy I'm, yeah <laughs> I'm like see this is it like he figured it out <laughs> this is what i want to be like make beautiful art and somehow they like, let people get lost in it. Like yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. For sure. I love being like on the receiving end of that. So mm -hmm. I'm like, well, if I can give back in my own way, mm -hmm. that'll be the ultimate yeah. goal, I guess. Do you know Coro, his work? Um, he's basically, well, he was a concept artist. Um, and he uh, he used to work at Massive Black, that um, that production studio um, here in San Francisco. And he's, he made this crazy graphic novel about this homeless guy who could see aliens. And um, it started out like as an idea that he was messing around with in his spare time. And he thought he was going to do like, like five panels out of it. But he, the further he got into it, it just became this crazy like 100-page graphic novel that he oh, made out of it. I haven't so. heard of it, but I'll definitely yeah. <laughs> look into it. What's the name? Uh, he goes by Coro. No, the name of the book. Too. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I can't. I don't remember the name of the book itself. Okay, but, I'll look it up. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. I don't even know if I've ever seen it. Uh, I think it's on his website. Is it? Yeah, I'll check it out. And then uh, you know, like Sinkevich, like his his. Oh, yeah. oh my god, it's just <laughs> love such. Sinkevich. Yeah, and then it's like the art and the stories are just they go so well. Mm -hmm. But that philosophical mm -hmm. stuff that gets that he gets into, but then it just the art supports really beautifully you don't mm -hmm. even think about like how complex the art is just because you're so into the story right yeah oh like, oh, yes <laughs> so would you want to write the story of the crab children as well let me i would attempt <laughs> <laughs> and then if, if for some reason it just doesn't um land then i'll have some help but definitely sure. i, I want to start somewhere because nice. again like if i depend on people then i'll never finish it right. like right away right yeah. I, I like to go to somebody with a lot of work done already mm -hmm. be like this is what i have help me out for sure versus like this is this concept that has my head <laughs> lot, like you're the most serious about your work than anybody else right, is, right? Yeah. so if you depend on other people to be just as excited it's never gonna happen yeah <laughs> you have to like get them excited mm -hmm. to that point where like yeah let's do it so I want to present something enticing. That's awesome. If I need that, like, help. Cause I'm not the best writer. But, again, some stories hmm. are purely visual, so mm -hmm. they might not need as much in the beginning yeah. for me to start. So we'll yeah, see. Just take a note from Pixar and start tugging on strings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I just remembered uh, it's called Transient, that, that graphic knowledge you're talking about. I've heard of it. <laughs> I haven't read it, though. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. But um, have you written very many stories for yourself before? I've storyboarded. If okay. That makes sense. So I've done that a lot. All right. And, um, actually, but like I'm for yourself to, right to generate sort of story ideas, have you done much of it? Yeah, I would. Again, uh, this for myself. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. I, I had a really... <laughs> bad teacher in high school yeah. who kind of traumatized me what about my writing <laughs> i don't remember well, but hope um you're sad right now <laughs> no they, they got fired actually <laughs> they got fired when i was there Good but riddance. they didn't you know it, the damage was done like he was, right. he was such um so he was so hard on everybody's writing mm -hmm. to the point where like i would get really low f's Mm -hmm. In his class, like F minus or something. Yeah, well, like twenty percent. Oh, oh wow! And like I'm not, I know I don't write like 
for 20%. Come <laughs> He's on. like, you know Shakespeare. Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, he would take, it was just so brutal that I, I literally thought I was like, um, I, I was just a terrible, terrible writer to the point where mm. like, I should be ashamed of wow. my writing. And it, to this day, I kind of have like that moment of like, oh, this is, I, I'm cringing and like reading this back, which I guess like, every writer goes through that. And that's why they have the editors because then they would, they, they would edit it for you. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you read back and like, yeah, this is much better. Mm-hmm. But like, I can't even show it to anybody because I'm so embarrassed by mm-hmm. what I'm writing. But now I'm like, I'm trying to, you know, now yep. I'm 30, almost 31. I'm like, okay, this is irrational. <laughs> that's why I'm you not a terrible writer. Just get your right. ideas out there. It's fine. Sure. You have to have that one friend that no matter what loves everything you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you think about this? And they're, they're the hype man. They're like, yeah. oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's my mom. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. She's my greatest fan. I wasn't sure, but I was going to say, you should show your parents. That's always the like, <laughs> go-to. The parents are always like, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but um, I was going to say, uh, uh, when I was in high school, I had this teacher, uh, uh, my English teacher, and and he made us write something. I forget what, but. Uh, I made up this story and at the end the person died. Like, I think he started the story and then at the end of the story I made the person die and I remember thinking like, oh, that was a great story. And then <laughs> he, uh, he, um, he said like, oh yeah, like, uh, and he like highlighted like a couple people that wrote mm-hmm. good stories. And he was like, and for all you people that made the person die at the end, not original. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, Ugh. Uh. See, I like I see. I never had stuff like that. To uh-huh. me, all my writing was just like analytical writing. Mm-hmm. It was never like a creative. Mm. Like you come up with an idea right. and you just develop into something and make it cool. It yeah. was never that. It was like, oh, read this piece and then like make cool thoughts about it. Oh, <laughs> like what okay. you thought like, about this piece, yeah. right? Yeah, book report kind of book thing. report, but nonstop to the point mm-hmm. where it had to be very, very like critical but you know not on a professional level and like mm-hmm. i tried but it's hard like, right. you know and you know if you're not good at it you're like okay i'm not the best at it but like don't punish me for not being your top student right mm-hmm. to the point like i don't want to write anything mm-hmm. right and he, i mean they got fired for that because like <laughs> everybody got a low f <laughs> and you're like okay this is not normal yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but then you're a kid so your brain is developing and you're like scarred for life or at mm. least for like the next 10 years right yeah and that's not like, nice yeah it's, a bad teacher could really like, ruin you <laughs> seriously it's seriously. very very important not to have bad teachers and yeah. i have some some friends who are, who teach and they're kind of harsh and i tell them like be careful because mm-hmm. some people don't take criticism well yeah like i'm one of those people like i'm I get terrified by mean teachers just mm. by the, the sheer look of like, you know, the eyebrows down. That to <laughs> me is scary. And if you're scared, you're not going to perform well mm. no matter what. And like some people are like, no, you shouldn't sugarcoat anything. You should be very harsh so that they know the reality. I'm like, well, there, there's a way to be creative, the um, critical and supportive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You right. know, just don't be rude. Like, that's it. Yeah. Don't be like, right. no, this is this is shit. You should do this because then you're really installing that instilling installing both (laughs) that um, attitude in that person and could be for life Mm -hmm. yeah for sure it's at the same time students like me probably didn't help the situation I was a horrible (laughs) student I was probably the one that made those teachers evil Uh, (laughs) I don't know it's like the kids trying and I'm like they should know though yeah (laughs) yeah 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 it's true though I, I keep I recently learned like the last year that your brain doesn't fully develop until you're 25. Yeah. Right. You're like what? That's not even 18. Yeah. It's like way past the, when you're considered an adult. For sure. Right. And um, and then the Usually part that develops, yeah. <laughs> and the part that develops the like last is the part that deals with seeing the bigger picture, right. like not being impulsive, thinking about consequence, all these things. Right. It's like that's well in your mid twenties uh-huh. yeah. that you finally. And I remember like being twenty five, and you kind of <gasps> have that yeah. aha moment. Like oh, I can kind of see it now. <laughs> I kind of see like all the mistakes I've made. Yeah. It's weird. You just like. You almost like your brain steps back and sees the bigger picture, but until then you're you're in it. Yeah. And, um, and I, the weird thing is, I hear like every ten years something happens. Like I heard when you turn like thirty five, 
all of a sudden you look back and you're like, oh, man, like, and I'm like, what's going to happen now? What a, yeah. I mean, um, but yeah, I, I had the same experience when I turned 25, things just like clicked into place and I was like, oh, it's weird. It's yeah. weird. Until it happens, you don't believe it's going to happen. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I, mm -hmm. I kind of understand. And you kind of like, uh, get m more comfortable too. Cause because you see big picture, then you almost like you don't fear other people's opinion oh, as much. Oh, exactly. Like that. Oh, yeah. You now to... I couldn't care less. Yeah. I'm like, oh, so <laughs> exactly. much hate. So much hate on my like, Okay. <laughs> I'm just drawing. If you're so bothered, just log <laughs> out. People leave you hate comments? Oh, yeah. Do oh, they really? Email. People email me, me and stuff. Yeah. What? I get, oh, I get all kinds of That's crazy. crazy. Which is fine. I get it. It comes with the numbers. But uh -huh. I'm like, I, I've only gotten my... the time of day? I've only gotten like backhanded compliments. That's like <laughs> yeah. that happens too. But I've never gotten like. Have you gotten like full on? Oh yeah, really? I've, wow. had, I've had people call me like a pretentious, pretentious. Oh. Uh, <laughs> see, <laughs> we've actually. Oh man, that's so funny. We had a, a whole story about that. Yeah. Something happened to Josh at an art show. Someone <laughs> called me that at an art show. <gasps> wow. Well, at least they did it to my face. I guess that's more <laughs> brave mm -hmm. than. Typing it that out. That is brave. Yeah, it was a little girl, like not a little, but like uh, what? compared to my like size wise, like she was like tiny and I was big, so that's even more braver. But, <laughs> and they just they were annoyed. What happened? Yeah, because I was in the, the middle story? of a conversation and and I I went to like <laughs> say hi to her really quick and then I went back to the conversation and that made her mad. Really? Yeah. But did she know you were before? No. Or did you just met her? No, I just met her. What? So, I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> I feel See, that's, yeah. I would be a little scared. It up over and over. <laughs> I'd be a little to, scared. A... I recently had a, um, a, a guy who uh, emailed, no, he didn't email, what was it? Like, he just has some problems with artists. Mm -hmm. I don't know what hmm. his deal is. Hmm. And he started, like, kind of spewing some hate on my page. Mm -hmm. And I try to be like, okay, if this is a gallery, you wouldn't come in and just, say this For like sure. you would just be like mm -hmm. yelling in the middle of the gallery that's how i treat social media it's like right. this is kind of a, an open public space and mm -hmm. we try to be respectful like obviously if someone has opinions i leave them but if someone's rude for no reason i'm right. like well you know you're, i'm not going to tolerate that mm -hmm. so i ended up like blocking them mm -hmm. and then they made a fake account it started like all oh, this hate i'm like what and i blocked that and then Gosh, it was fine people are bored just, what? Yeah. I don't know. you need a hobby you need to go home make an art studio <laughs> go into that studio and work so you don't have time to find people to hate on i mean people i don't even understand, I don't understand that. it yeah i don't understand either because uh, there's nothing that i'm like it's not even like my art is that I don't know, provocative. Right, yeah, that's like, why I'm wondering why. Huh. Just, what about it would attract haters to you at all? I don't know. It's crazy. I don't know. I think some people are annoyed if you you get some kind of attention. Hmm. You're like, well, oh, maybe. I'm better than you. Like, why do you get the attention? Oh. Hmm. And I go, well, I don't know. Like, just, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't pay for this. It just happened. Yeah, right. I'm happy it's happening, but, like, I'm not uh, – I don't know what to do with it. Sometimes I'm like, what do I do with these numbers? Like, just kind of just people are they crazy. mean everything and nothing. Yeah, I mean, right. for some people, and, they're everything. And who, ca and who like, cares? Oh, like, who cares? Someone has five hundred thousand followers. Why? Why does that make? Why does that justify me being yeah. envious of that? You know, it's like mm. just leave them be. I it's mean, okay. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Yeah, people are crazy. And I, there's there's. Art, there's a place for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, n I don't think anybody's stopping whoever's, like, the hater from creating work. Right. Yeah, for sure. It's just, like, <laughs> if you if you actually stop hating, you might have, like, five minutes of sketch time. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, that is taking away from, yeah. from sketch time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I always find that really weird. I, I don't even, I can't even, in my head, it's, like, it's social media. I only go there to see, like for the most part to see people's artwork and it's only to be like blown away by it to be like mm -hmm. oh my gosh that's amazing it's so like right. what you were talking about earlier how people are like oh man like it's not good enough for me that all these things are like feeding me yeah, it's like I'm the same right, I see yeah. amazing artwork I'm like oh that's amazing I want to like it like motivates me to yeah. push yeah, me the same all way. these great things I've always been that way yeah. it's yeah. such I think it's a great moment 
for that. Like, there's yeah. such a nice community online of yeah. artists, and everybody's trying to do, like, to push themselves. Yeah. And, like, it just makes me want to do that. Yeah. And it makes me not want to be lazy. Yeah. <laughs> and like, sometimes I'm lazy with my drawings, and I see it, and, like, I'm like, it's a pretty drawing, but I knew, like, I know that I didn't mm. work as hard as I wanted mm. to. Right. Yeah, I've definitely and, felt that. And if I see something, like, really, like, pushing and kick ass, I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to be lazy with the next one. It mm. sure. happens. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, it's great. And not only that, but it's such like a, for, for well, at least what I've found is people are so like open and like willing to have like little mini conversations yeah. and things like that. And, you know, big up each other and say like, wow, this is amazing. Like mm -hmm. I'm blown away by this. And it's like, I don't know, it's just a great community in that way. And I tried to, to like uh, talk to people that are, you know, coming up as artists and they're, you know, just not they're just little young, not little young people figuring <laughs> things out, and the, little miniature they, people. <laughs> they, you know, their way of finding the answers nowadays are finding people they think are good artists and asking them questions. And it's mm -hmm. like, if I had that opportunity when I was young, I would have totally capitalized on that. I would have been all yeah. over the internet, like, <laughs> oh my god, uh, how do you do this? Yeah. Blah, right. so. But it's important also to ask very concrete questions yeah do that because yeah. sometimes i get I'm like how do you, how do you come up with your style yeah like well where do i begin I, first of all i don't think it's a style mm. I, I call it like a like visual language you just mm. right. build your little shorthands for yeah. stuff mm -hmm, like exactly. how you draw a nose or right. how you draw whatever yeah. and like you know you, you repeat it a hundred times and people start recognizing it here mm -hmm. and there <laughs> but then they think that's like a style no it's like you do it so many times that it becomes part of your visual yeah. language same mm -hmm. with like random shapes yeah. yeah you add something here like squiggle or even color like splash and it becomes that visual library that mm -hmm. you build for yourself yeah and i think people recognize. i think your nature also goes into it like if you're if you're really like patient and yeah you know calm about things it'll show in your work and if you're like you know your mind's always every which way it'll show in your work and I always tell people when they ask me things like that, I'm always like, just, just keep working and it'll just naturally develop over time. Yeah. And you I always say like, start it. with live drawing. Live drawing mm -hmm. to me was literally like, if you don't know anything about where to begin, mm -hmm. that's it. That's your holy grail. To this good, day, mm -hmm. like, um, if I get rusty, I go to live drawing. Yeah. Because, you know, especially gesture drawing, because it's so quick. Mm -hmm. You have no time to overthink and doubt yourself you're like mm -hmm. okay let's do it and then after like the first you know 10 drawings they're ter terrible mm -hmm. you don't show them anybody but like the 11th one is like okay this is decent <laughs> right. like right. your brain yeah. has already worked up a little bit exactly yeah and then um, afterwards you can go sketch something else and you're already mm -hmm. in that like zone of uh -huh. being mm -hmm. in that creative whatever it is like wavelength mm -hmm. yeah a lot of times when I go to a life drawing session afterwards uh, it's best when I have a uh, painting the, a figure that I have to draw in the studio, like right afterwards, I'm already warmed up for it. So I already yeah. have something going on there. So, yeah. That's cool. It totally makes sense. Every time I do the Wednesday one, I have to go straight to bed. When I, <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It is so, a workout. Like, oh, my God. Well, that was fun. Now I got to go to sleep. So <laughs> yeah, I never exactly. get to experience this. Uh... Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you go for? For the live drawing? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just started doing it. I never was, like, classically trained oh, or went I to see. school. Mm -hmm. so really? I, wow. Yeah, so I just, like, would just do do whatever I, like, figured things out. And mm -hmm. I wasn't really, like, internet savvy for the longest time either. So uh, I would just, you know, had my, I would go to the art store and, like, look around. And I would never talk to the workers either. <laughs> I remember I, I, my first time I bought oil paint. Uh -huh. I was just washing it out with like water and like going like oh really the towel. and I was like what this, what this thing sucks and <laughs> and, uh, and um, I went to the art store and I was like I don't know why my brushes they just keep like I have to throw them away out, like right after I use them and she was like what and I'm like yeah I try to clean them they never clean and, and then she was like this is how you clean them yeah, okay <laughs> and I was like. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> How interesting. Uh, yeah, so everything was like a slow yeah. process until yeah. I got better at like, until YouTube became a thing. <laughs> it was like every answer is on there for me. <laughs> yeah, but, totally. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was just me being 
super into art, but not having any of the answers given to me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I never but did. That's like, you, you learn. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with what you did. No. At least like you're out there trying. Yeah. It's better to do that, try and fail and be like, mm-hmm. okay, what am I doing wrong? Right. Versus like just sitting and overthinking because you'll never come up with a solution by thinking about it like right. artistically well, yeah. Yeah. and you might <laughs> but it's not gonna be by sitting around like usually if i have an idea it's always like randomly and i'm like oh i gotta text this in my phone really quick yeah. if i have a mm-hmm. idea for something it's never right i'm never sitting there trying to think about stuff no that's just, like the worst way to come up yeah. with an idea yeah <laughs> just it comes to me i'm like oh that's a good idea for something let me write that down before i forget mm-hmm and you don't or quickly sketch it yeah, yeah or mm-hmm. quickly sketch it yeah exactly that's what sketchbooks are like I always yeah. have one um, yeah yeah you need yeah. that visual um, and sometimes that sketch reminder. you're like never mind that was garbage <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad idea <laughs> do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and I write stuff down I've never done that. I've I've had well I did one I talked about it before, like I think it was, uh, podcast show ago about a mermaid oh it yeah with chris lee we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh for the most part i don't uh, d- uh have any ideas mm-hmm. from sleep do you sometimes really? <laughs> yeah That's sometimes cool. i'll wake up and just write it down um just because I, I know i'll forget the visual but if i mm-hmm. read it it'll come up to me like mm-hmm. i'll recall it mm-hmm and uh, sometimes I'm like, what is that? Like, I yeah, yeah. get the vision. I'm like, nope, yeah. not right. It's huh. weird. That's <laughs> awesome. But I've had a lot of interesting stories. Like, at least um, what I like about doing that is, like, I get a mood, mm-hmm. mm. like some okay. kind of feeling. Uh-huh. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm like, okay, if I can catch capture that feeling somehow. And these are from dreams? Is that? Yeah, dreams are, like, just thoughts you know mm. like right before you fall asleep you mm-hmm. kind of have those like yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of um delu- <laughs> they're not delusional but they're like half awake mm-hmm. yeah i was just saying that um These a few all- episodes ago too that uh, that's that used to be the majority of places that i um, took uh ideas for paintings from was that like half in between really? sleep huh. and, and waking yeah i didn't that that moment for me is always horrific really it's not horrific but like it's like a scatterbrain like i start worrying oh about it's almost like you know when you don't know if you're off the stove <laughs> yes yeah. like my brain when i'm half asleep half awake i'm like is the stove off or on is it off or on Did I yeah. off it? I did, and then i'll wake up and i'll be halfway to the kitchen i'm like i didn't even cook today and i'll go <laughs> turn back around and I'm like, <laughs> Like so stupid. I'm so mad at myself. Like anxiety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. And then uh my dreams, if I remember them, they're always horrible. <laughs> like, they're never like that was a great dream. It's always like, oh, that was dark. Man. All right. <laughs> I had this one um thing well it was like it was like a recurring uh dream of like the I'm walking and then all of a sudden the earth shifts, so like it becomes a like everything's falling, mm-hmm. so I have to like hold on to stuff. Huh. And uh, I'm like, what is the, what does this mean? And so I was like, okay, this like losing control mm-hmm. feel. So I was trying to draw. It was huh. like a long time ago. Do you ever fall? Yeah, always. Mm. Yeah. Do you ever hit the bottom? Uh, well, I wake up. Mm. See, like uh, right before right before disaster, I wake up. So <laughs> uh, someone told. I remember when I was a kid. Someone told me that like uh, when you hit the bottom, if you hit the bottom, you die. Yeah. And I've hit the bottom so many times. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, you don't die. You just wake up super sad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's like yeah. a. I have like all these like me dying dreams. Not like not like anything crazy. Just me falling or me getting hit by a car. Yeah. Hmm. And then those. I like see my body like I'm above it and I'm. Oh dying. really? You see that? Yeah, and so you I'm, actually sleep through the. Like, yeah. What? And I'm, I was and I'm huh, like super sad, like looking at myself. I'm like, wow, that's it. Like that's. And I wake up, and the entire day, I'm just in this like weird like. It does huh. change your mood. Yeah, because I, I literally thought I died. It's not like a fake. It's like I. Yeah. It's like a, I died. <laughs> wow. And then I wake up. I'm like, uh, and it's like I feel like I just died. So I'm like uh, the whole entire day. I'm just like a Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> Uh, and you can't explain it either. No, because no. it's such a irrational it feeling. Yeah, yeah. 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 I uh, had. I, I actually the the ones that 
probably stay with me throughout the day are mm-hmm. like anger mm-hmm. dreams. Like mm-hmm. I have this like injustice dreams. Like I have this like oh, major yeah. injustice happening in my mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've woken so many times with like my fist in the air. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to punch somebody. Yeah. And that's how I wake up. I'm like, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and then the whole day, like mm, I'm just a like, curmudgeon because mm-hmm. you know that I have that feeling like yeah. who did me wrong? Or like my oh. friends or my family? That's like crazy. who hurt my family? I've never even had that dream. Oh, I've had a few. I accidentally punched my wife in my dream, oh. like, <laughs> like in <laughs> real life. But, like I woke up, I was like, did I just hit you? She's like, ah. <laughs> and she tells everyone. Now. Oh. She's told it for it happened years ago, and she's like, yeah, Josh hits me, and I'm like. <laughs> finished the story and then she's like he was sleeping he was dreaming of fighting someone and he punched me and they're oh. like oh okay that's lo- not the story you just said yeah <laughs> uh, i don't know if i should be saying this out loud that's funny <laughs> well at least you have a record now uh, yeah to yeah that's point true. people to <laughs> well yeah it's a dream uh, but that's cool i've never what do you get from your dreams um, it depends. Like, I actually had a dream, uh, I think it was Friday that I ended up sketching out, <laughs> actually. It was just a, it's kind of a weird dream that, uh, there's some girl that I was on a date with and I made her cry. <laughs> <laughs> going Sergio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> dream Sergio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you punch uh, her? <laughs> no. Did you take her to a Pixar movie? Oh. <laughs> <Big> mistake. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean that that didn't turn into anything that I wanted to paint. But I like sketched down, like do some watercolor on it. I was like, oh, I'll make this into something. Hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I mean, it, sometimes it depends. Uh, it, it's that that when my brain is coming, it's always coming out of uh, being uh, sleep. It's when my uh, brain is coming out of sleep and it's still in that mode of like rifling through a bunch of different images in my head. Mm-hmm. And so it's imagery, you think, more than like concept? Um, yeah, I guess so. Well, <laughs> the concept, a lot of times for me, uh, the imagery, I make a concept out of the imagery. Hmm. Um, and so like there'll be. Yeah, I'll do that too. Hmm. Um, like the way I go through reference and inspirational stuff, um, I let it just sit in my head and, and uh, kind of just be let my brain be this big blender and then whatever it shoots out from time to time, like out of a dream or something like that. Hmm. Um, it'll sometimes guide me into a, a different direction that I want to go in with my art. Hmm. So that's like for, for my own work, that's what I get out of dreams mostly. But yeah, a lot of times I have like dreams that suck or they're boring i don't remember them at all (laughs) too wacky (laughs) it's too far out like i can't do anything with this so yeah so you guys both start like image first and then build concept around it not always but but a lot of times i kind of have like for me the majority yeah my my man i'm like oh this is something i really there's like a usually i start with like whatever feeling i want to get Mm -hmm. and if i can tie it in with something that is on my mind Mm -hmm. like conceptually Mm -hmm. That's usually good. But if it doesn't, then it's fine, too. Hmm. It's, like, more abstract. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I wonder how much of that is, like, an artist mindset. Because I hear that mm-hmm. a good amount. I, like, personally don't work that way. Right. But I hear it a lot. Like, I hear um, where the artist will paint something and then almost, like, look back at it and be like, oh, that's what that is. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And kind of draw from, like, light, what's going on in their life or something like that is, like, a... Like, I didn't even realize that's why I was doing that until I did it or something mm. like that. <clears throat> uh, and I've, I haven't really thought about that uh, much until probably this podcast because uh, you know, it, it almost becomes like a thing where it's easy to push against. Hmm. Where you go like, mm, that sounds like a lie. You know, like say if someone paints something and they're like... And then after I painted it, I realized it meant this. Oh, right. Then yeah, yeah. someone could easily go like... Hmm, is that true? Hmm. You know, like there's, right. like there's there's this easy easy pushback you can do to that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's a lot of the reason why I, I guess I I work the way I do, where um, my concepts like I I'm really into uh, not only in my own work but of other people's work when the narrative is really ambiguous, where it, there's a lot of open ended mm-hmm. um, meaning to the the work. Right. So yeah, in in a way, it's also to be like. To be able to deflect those kind of, of mm. people, like looking into your work and mm, trying to sure. think, like, oh, okay, that's a 
that's what he tried to mean. It's like, well, not necessarily. <laughs> but I mean, there is something about like the graphic novel, like idea where uh, uh, the idea is then attached to a group of words, which mm-hmm. conveys that idea. So it does allow some concrete, like um, this is what that means. Right. You know, yeah. In yeah. a way. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's probably like I almost wish sometimes that I, I did work that way. I was like, oh, I wish I did have more like concrete stories to tell. Mm-hmm. I'm just not that type of person to have that kind of of uh, way of working. For sure. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's, uh, everything. It's okay. Mm-hmm. I think there's enough yeah. of artists like that. Mm-hmm. They're like, if you're, so. that's not your forte. That's fine. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because they can't really. They probably can't do what you do. Mm. Vice Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, whatever. It's yeah, a, I know what you're saying. Yeah. They, they can do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got to learn to paint better and better. <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's one, another thing that it's kind of a, I, I always think about this, especially nowadays with all the stuff that happens um, in the world, right? And there's like such craziness and like really bad stuff. And you're like, okay, what? What are we doing with our art? Like, are we just pr- painting pretty pictures? Like, right. what is... Like, you kind of have this... I have, at least myself, I have this, like, guilt. Like, oh, I should be doing, like, important <laughs> um, <Right>. social, <laughs> socially, like, charged art. But right. then, also, first of all, I'm not... Like, sometimes I do, because I, I just can't not do it. Mm-hmm. Right. You just feel so compelled. It's like, okay, I have to get this out of me. Whatever it is, like, mm. this feeling, like, it has to be done. But if it's forced, it doesn't work. No, mm-hmm. I don't think so. And in and the same time, um, like, why? There's so many people that do it really, mm-hmm. really well. And, like, we shouldn't feel guilty all the time about, yeah. like, doing that. Like, there's there's enough art in the world that there's space for people that genuinely just want to enjoy whatever they're doing painting drawing Mm -hmm. they just want to display that Mm -hmm. um thing and and make that uh their passion for art contagious yeah and i I I think another thing too is like us as artists like we use our art to kind of tell a visual story you know in whatever way we're doing it and i think if then we feel this pressure that whatever is happening in the outside world has to be kind of dictates what we create, then I think it would just become very boring almost to like, cause if you think of like writers or whatever, there's the people that write about politics exactly. and there's the people that write about fantasy or whatever. And mm-hmm. there's this wide spectrum of us. And if we all, but they live, I feel like they they coexist. Yeah, and they should be the same way. Yeah, and if you ever listen to like Stephen King talk about his political beliefs, he's very politically driven. You know, yeah. like he he's very passionate about that. But he might put parts of it into his story, but the overwhelming like amount of the you know like what makes him write isn't that. It's just mm. a yeah. part of his life. Right. Um, well, that's that's the same the same way I feel about um, you know art that's mm-hmm. more illustrative more concrete than then like the abstract stuff like they they don't have to compete against each other no yeah. and i see this so many times like people yeah. put like oh you're you're an illustrator right. you're not a painter I'm like no i'm mm-hmm. both like mm-hmm. is that okay with you <laughs> yeah there's so many times when it's just i was looking at the oh, clock okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah it just blows my mind that we're still doing this like right? sure. we're still putting artists against artists and like yeah. huh. constantly comparing and there's, you know, there's artists that they're very good at, like, technique-wise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's artists that are very good concept-wise. Right. And it's fine to have both. And it's fine, sure. like, one to lack in the other thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a big part of me that would actually like to illustrate. I actually went to school for illustration. So, um, and then when I used to read a lot more, I used to get a lot more just visual ideas from reading books. I'd read all sorts of different things, like fantasy stories sometimes too. And uh, part of me um, would still like to do some of that. I I think I'm better at uh, taking what pictures that I generate in my head and make them into things rather than like coming up with stories on my own. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I just think the art, like art in general, whatever form you're going to create in, 
there's good art and bad art and there's no it's not dictated by the medium mm -hmm. or by the style or whatever it it's, it's it's almost like how you were talking about the pencil earlier it's like it's amazing how a pencil can create some of the most amazing art and a stick figure like it the, you know it's it it it, it, it and you wouldn't say like, oh, you paint with a, you draw with a pencil. You're not a real artist. It's not that. It's just the, uh, it's the, you know, the rising tide idea. Like, if artists all are creating and making great art, there's enough people in the world to support those artists. If we, you know, if if um, art at least gains in value, that's the <laughs> big conversation but yeah. i mean i think we're coming close to an end so uh thank you so much for doing this oh thank you that was yeah. just super fun was super fun I um, and uh, i, I love you... talking about stuff like that even if it's kind of sporadic like we just covered so much yeah. so, so much ground but it's, yeah that's kind of how fun. we do no i love that i love yeah. it because that that's how we think yeah I'm like you know, you bounce from idea to idea. Yeah, all the yeah time. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And we really want it to feel like artists having conversations. Yeah, like it's a, organic. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, is there anything you want to promote for yourself? You do. Do you uh, stuff that a Ben well, Gallery up? Oh, that's yeah. I'm not sure how long it's going for, but it, it, I think it's still up. Mm, okay. It's in Denver. That's right? in Denver. So if you're in Denver area, I'll be in Comic Con. Oh. In San Diego awesome. next month. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, sure. Look forward Do you to like that. doing the cons? I love them. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I love just sketching and, and that's meeting cool. people. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'll be with my book there, whatever's left of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have oh, yeah, the hard covers. Book. Oh, yeah. What's the title? <laughs> it's called Raw Material, oh, Volume see. 1. <laughs> nice. Volume 2 is almost done as well. Cool. So I'm pushing for that, but probably next year. Nice. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm making a little short film. It's like a my own project. Oh, that's side, awesome. <laughs> which takes forever. It's 10 I'm minutes sure. and it's just eating my time right now. So <laughs> no, I was going to launch my second book this year. Like the Are you doing it like crowdfunding it. well this time? I probably will. Nice. Um, and, but I think it's going to be next year. Awesome. Yeah, that's you, it. Do you have a website? <laughs> yes. It's it? my name, elizaivanova.com, awesome. or Eliza, E L E E Z A, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the cool thing about my website is actually is that I archive everything. So, mm -hmm. even because right now, like on Instagram, I, I'm kind of curating it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. there's stuff that I remove. For sure. Like, I don't remove anything on my website. So, if you oh, want really? to see like stuff from way back when, mm. there's there's a lot more. And they're also bigger, like in size. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's so important. That's what I keep it for. Hmm, Just, awesome. Uh, for myself, too. It's right. nice to like archive for sure. things. And if something is deleted, that's fine, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's it. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you so much for yeah. having me. Uh, yeah, thank you. This has been waiting to dry. <laughs> Uh, if you're still listening, go check a painting. It's probably dry. <laughs> <laughs>